I had an awesome viewer of mine send me some stems and they told me to have at it. This track has a great groove and I really enjoy vibing to it, but it doesn't have a whole lot of structure to it yet. So I thought this would be a great opportunity to take the song and show how we can arrange electronic songs and use dynamics to tell a story. So I'm gonna demo a before and after of the same section of the song and you're gonna see what I did to create some dynamics and make the track pop. Here's the original breakdown section. Alright, and here's my version. All right, so that's one section of the song, and I will break that down at this timestamp if you wanna go check that out now. But let's start at the beginning of the song. So let's show the elements that are in this song. So we start with these drums. Bass. Pads. Here's our main art motif. Then we have some effects. And this bell motif. So these are all the elements of the track. Now let's talk about arranging them. If we go back to the start, let's talk about when we are bringing in all of the elements. Now my goal here is to help arrange the track, to add some dynamics to it. My goal is not to reinvent the wheel, completely change up all of the sounds that the original artist intended. Um, I could do that, but that's just not where I wanted to go today. I wanted to focus on doing simple things to the song to help it have a better progression and a better story that unfolds over the course of the track. I didn't really wanna to go too heavy into the sound design. We can save that for another day. So here in this project, I have the original version of the song, the original raw stems that they sent over to me here in this group. And then in this group, I have the version that I did. So let's open up the original group and see how this thing is grooving. So when it comes to the structure of this original tune, there's only a couple sections where things drop out for a minute. You can see here some bass drops out and that's the main section, but we want to take that to the next level. So let's talk about how we can go through and create more of a story here. So let's start with the beginning of the song. So I started to rearrange this track by shifting the focus on different instruments at different times. So if we take a listen to where the first drums come in, in the original section, I'll play it for you here, everything's coming in at once. Let's take a listen to that. So the original version has the drums, the pad, and the lead arpeggio, and some effects all coming in at once. And while I like how that sounds, I wanted to create more of a build, more of a story that is unfolding in front of us. So I actually held back on that lead arpeggio at the front. So if you take a listen to my version here, pay attention to that arp, and I'll show you the filter that is going on during that time. So we're starting the song with just that pad, just kind of laying the groundwork of the song. And then slowly you can see and hear this arp start to fade in. Now here, here's the time for it to shine. So 
So that's the first thing I did to this tune to create some sense of progression. So what you'll see when we break this tune down a little bit more is that originally the song was just like full energy and then just like a dip in the middle. Instead, what I tried to incorporate into this song was ramp it up, come back down for the breakdown, ramp it back up, and then slowly fade out with the outro. So if you see the markers that I have at the top of the section, I kind of named some areas where some things are happening. So obviously where the drums are coming in, Here's where I really make the lead arpeggio pop more. Here's a big breakdown. I created a bit of a B section after the breakdown. And then back to full power with that lead arpeggio and then an outro. When we're trying to turn a four bar loop into an entire song, the best thing you can do to start that process is by using your mute buttons and your filters. So try different instrument pairs together. Try a section with just the bass and just the drums, just the lead and the drums, just the pad and the bass. Testing these tiny pairs together will allow you to start thinking about how you can shape the song around the biggest sections. Because if your song is always at a 10 on the energy scale, then it's really just a one. It takes change to make the song pop. Just like you can't have light without dark, you can't have big without small. All right, so on that topic of change, let's talk about how we can create some smooth transitions between the sections of this tune. One thing you'll hear in a lot of dance music is the use of filters and dropping out elements to help guide the track a bit. And we do this to foreshadow what's about to come next on the dance floor and to create that tension. So here's that section I played a few minutes ago where that arp is starting to come into its full power. So at the end of just about every 16 bars in this track, I am holding out on the kick and I'm filtering out the bass to create a little bit of tension and also to make the track feel less like Lego blocks and something more fluid. You can see my filter there. It's a small thing, but it's just enough to revitalize the energy of the tune. And then we do that later going into the breakdown as a way to smooth out the transition. Let's take a listen here. Here it lightens up the energy and gets you ready for that transition. So compared to the original version, I actually extended the breakdown by twice the amount. I really wanted it to take its time and slowly come back up to full energy. So if we go from about here, before, this is the original version here, this is what it sounds like. It doesn't sound bad going in there. I just wanted to extend it and make it f take its time a little bit more. So if we open up my version here, let's listen to how this breaks down and builds back up. Everything drops out. The pad actually starts to be a washout with the effect that I have going on here. Things are slowly filtering back up. Here we just have a kick, not the full groove yet. Slowly bringing that hat in. Reverb's coming up. dive just a little bit deeper. Let's listen to how the pad changes. Here's the normal motif. When the breakdown happens, it actually washes out into this effect here. I really like this sound because it maintains like the timbre of the original pad sound, but it just extends it all. It removes all those transients and just creates this ambient wash. Then this lead arpeggio is being filtered a lot, and it's slowly coming up into its energy. And then there's also this tremolo kind of effect, just like chomping down on it a bit. So let's talk about this reverb swell a little bit. 
Right before all those elements drop out, I have almost every single instrument being thrown to the reverb as hard as it can be. And then when we get to that, I have this uh, freeze effect that's being turned on on the reverb. Now, I'm using this particular reverb. It doesn't matter which one uh, you use. A lot of reverbs have this effect. But what's happening is, if you listen to just the reverb, that freeze knob is being turned on, and it is just holding the reverb in place. Then I have a tremolo effect coming on here. And that allows us to control the reverb like a synth, basically. So let's take a listen to that by itself. I think that's a really cool sound. Then some other stuff is going on with some echo as well. If I solo this echo effect. The bass is also having its low end cut out here. All right, so now coming back into the groove, it sounds a lot different than the original. So if I take a listen to the original, this is where we're at at this point of the song. But this is what it's sounding like now, where I added a sort of B section, you might call it. It's just the bass and just the, the bell motif and the drums. So this is just enough time to change the groove up a little bit. Then we start to foreshadow the pad sound coming back in right here. All I did was just duplicate it a little bit and add some volume automation to create this kind of stutter effect. I just thought it was about time to add some rhythmic variation to the sound. So now that we're in this B section, so now we're in this B section, and then it's time to foreshadow the ARPs again. Now we're back in at full energy, and this keeps going for 16 bars. Pretty stable, pretty stable. Now it's time to transition into the outro. We filter it up. Now by this point of the song, we've heard every element. So start to, you know, we start to come back down to earth. So I send this pad to a delay, chopped it up a bit, just to only play a little bit of it. Now that filter is gonna come up again on, the, on all the elements. And a soft landing to the end. So if we take a macro view of the second half of the song, we have that big breakdown that builds it up, builds it up and all dies away. There's all that tension, right? Come back into the B section. Then that leads to the section where everything's back in again, right? So then we're at like kind of peak energy. Then we slowly start to bring it back down. So. I feel like doing these tiny things really does bring more emotion to the song. It brings more of a story element and just more of a journey. So I really enjoyed helping to arrange this song a little bit more. And um, I really appreciate my viewer, Donk, for sending this track over to me to play with today. Now that we talked about all those arranging things, let's talk about a couple little mix things I did to create some variation, especially in regards to the drums. Towards the front half of the song, Drums are pretty dry. Later on, I add some extra variation, particularly with the hi-hat and the clap. So let's listen to that. Every other beat, I'm sending the hi-hat to a delay. Then another delay right there. So everything about the drums remains pretty dry up until the breakdown where I filter out the low end and the kick.
but then this hi-hat has a lot of, of echo on it. I'm also sending it to a convolution reverb at every last beat in the bar at this section. I'll exaggerate it a bit. And then the same kind of stuff is going on with the clap towards the end of the song. We're sending it to an echo and it's starting to create a bit of a roll sound. Now, if you've been working on a song for a while and it's sounding a bit dry and lifeless and you just don't know where else to take it, you can book a free music feedback video from me. Send me your song and I'll go through it and give you my unbiased feedback in a video with some actionable steps for how you can finish the tune. Sometimes when you listen to a song that you've been working on over and over again, you start to question your decisions. I'd love to be able to help you finish the tune and give you some ideas of where to take it next. This is something I love to do for artists. I do it for free. I just find it really helpful to get some extra ears on the project that you're working on. I know we all need it and I really value when I have somebody else listen to my tracks so I'd love to be able to hear your song hear how you made it what you're working with what kind of tools you're working with today I just love meeting artists and I really appreciate the opportunity that we have on this platform to share our music with each other so go check out my link down in the description and send me your song. I'd love to hear it. So in this video, we talked about arranging a song by paying attention to when an element is playing and when an element is not playing by using filters, by creating variation with some different effects that you might use in your tune. Ultimately, we want to create a song that feels alive and doesn't just feel like the same groove for three minutes straight. I believe we got a little bit closer to that today, and I'd love to hear your thoughts about it in the comments below. Let me know what you think of the track, and thanks again to my viewer, Donk, for sending the tune in to check out. All right, guys, stay in touch down below. I'll see you in the next video.